if there's anything I've learned from getting out of six figure debt and building up a six figure net worth, I'm realizing it was all an inside game. The more I became happy with myself and stopped trying to throw money at problems, the more my finances reflected that. Beginning early in your childhood, you have experiences that begin shaping your relationship with money. And for me, I began to make a connection between money and happiness starting very early on in my life. There were lots of experiences I can talk about, but the main overarching theme was that there was a lot of fighting in my family between my parents, even with in-laws, just extended family. And to me, to my five-year-old brain, it all seemed to be because of money. And so this belief that money equals happiness became cemented and just got stronger and stronger as I got older. Then as a teenager, when I bought my own car with money that I saved up, I just felt like I was so cool and powerful, you know, driving around in my convertible that I bought used, of course, it was a really cheap beat up car. But still, as soon as you become one of those kids at school that can drive instead of taking the bus, your cool factor instantly goes up. So that only just made it more cemented in my brain that money equals happiness, money equals status, approval. Now, you may have had a different upbringing from me, but we all have some version of this money belief that money is all important, that somehow it's the key to getting everything you want in life and boosting your self-worth. Because why else do many of us spend most of our lives working at a job to get a paycheck, commuting to that job, getting ready for that job, recovering from that job on weekends, and then spending your holidays trying to forget about your job? I'm sorry to frame it all in such a depressing way, but I'm really trying to make a point here. If you look at the way most people in modern society spend their time, they sacrifice their health, time with their family, to be at their jobs, it's obvious that we've all somehow bought into this money equals happiness story. Ever watch that movie, The Matrix? It's science fiction, but we are actually living a real life version of The Matrix. It's called capitalism. Although I believe capitalism is the best way to run an economy, it's certainly better than communism, capitalism has a dark side too, because it's always focused on more. More growth, more money, more stuff, more, more, more. And so we're stuck in this cycle of being overly focused on making money so that we can have more stuff, which requires you to go out and make more money so you can maintain that stuff and so on and so on. And then there's advertising. Advertising only feeds this machine of capitalism because the whole point of advertising is to get you to buy more. The subtle messaging behind all of this is buy this and you'll finally be good enough. You'll finally be beautiful enough, impressive enough. And I'm not making this up. It's a thing. It's called deficit advertising, which is a marketing strategy that subconsciously implies that you're not enough but if you buy this thing, you will be enough. Marketers know exactly how to get you to buy by preying on your deepest fears and insecurities. Here's a perfect example. There's this beautiful Chanel perfume ad with Kira Knightley. She is impossibly perfect, airbrushed, skinny, elegant. She's just living the dream. And of course, as a woman, you might look at this and I think, at least for me, the natural reaction is, wow, she's so perfect. I am nothing like her. Now, this all happens very unconsciously within a split second, but what happens is you think that you associate buying that perfume with somehow being as perfect as what you see in the ad. And that is what deficit advertising is. It sort of points out what you may not like about yourself by showing you an idealized, impossibly perfect version of what you could be if you bought this thing. The same goes with men's advertising. Similar ad, cologne ad for Tom Ford. There's this gorgeous Adonis looking guy and he's laying in bed. He looks really just cool and obviously he got laid and he's lying in bed naked. And if you're a guy, you'll probably look at this and subconsciously you will think like if I buy this cologne, somehow I will be as attractive and desirable as this guy. Like I said, it's called deficit advertising and it is everywhere. Next time you see an ad, try and point that out. According to Forbes, the average American is exposed to around four to 10,000 marketing messages a day. That's because we're in this digital age. And combined with this constant message that we're not good enough as we are, I'm not surprised that we're very in debt, depressed, medicated, obese, the most somehow backwards wealthy society in history. Reflecting back on my past money mistakes, the theme behind all of it was this kind of constant nagging feeling of not good enough, not good enough. That's why I would spend everything I made on buying nice clothes, going to expensive places with my friends and not being able to say no to things that were out of my budget. After that temporary hit of dopamine that you get after buying something, the high would wear off and then the voice of not good enough, not good enough would still be there. And really looking back, I realized that is what made me spend so much 
way more beyond my means. That change really didn't start until I started being nicer to myself. I started not judging myself so much and that's when my relationship with money began to heal because I wasn't just trying to throw money at things to fix myself or feel better about myself. Okay, and while we're on the subject of self-improvement, because it has so much to do with improving your relationship with money, I forgot to mention the sponsor for today's video, Audible. To me, self-improvement and books go hand in hand. Literally any positive change in my life, including finances, but also health, career, relationships, all of that happened because of what I learned in books. If you've been around here, you know how much I love books. I go through at least two to three books a month, and literally the only reason I'm able to do that is because of Audible, because I listen, I listen to books. Every chance I get, I put on my AirPods and listen to an audiobook from Audible, you know, when I'm walking my dog, making dinner, or just washing dishes. And this way I can really get through at least a chapter a day. One of my favorite audiobooks is The Power of Vulnerability by Brene Brown. I just wrapped up my third time listening to it because it's that good. I especially love when an audiobook is recorded in the author's own voice because it feels like they're right next to me passing on their wisdom directly person to person. As an Audible member, every month you get one free audiobook and full access to the Plus catalog, which has thousands of amazing audiobooks, podcasts, and Audible originals on every topic under the sun. My Audible library is a mix of autobiographies, self-help, and of course, finance books. So here's what I want you to do. Go to audible.com forward slash investing or text investing to 500, 500 for a free 30 day trial and go listen to Brene Brown's The Power of Vulnerability. It is so good. I had so many aha moments while listening to it. There are so many things that we need to forgive ourselves for and we're just way too hard on ourselves. So if you're interested in doing the inner work that it takes to truly change your finances, because I truly think it is an inside game, I highly recommend this audiobook. Again, just go to audible.com forward slash investing or text investing to 500, 500 for a free 30 day trial. Okay, so back to the video. This could have been yet another how to video, you know, seven tips and tricks for saving money, but I really wanted to address the root of the issue, like the deep reasons that drive us to spend money. Because honestly, if tips and tricks worked, we'd all be rich and debt free by now. And there's no shortage of tips on the internet on how to save money and spend less. But honestly, the secret to spending less and saving more is really simple. Just look in the mirror every morning and tell yourself, I am good enough just the way I am. No need to keep spending and spending to fill that void, digging yourself deeper into debt. I mean, if that's the situation you're in. Because from this moment on, you do not need to spend a single cent on becoming prettier, more accomplished, smarter, skinnier, or fixing anything about yourself. Because you're worthy just as you are, not as you will be after you buy this thing or fix this thing about yourself. Just right now, as you are. Because you're a human being and there will never be anyone else on the planet like you. This is something I constantly need to remind myself as well. It's such a journey. So next time you feel the urge to buy something, ask yourself, what is the need that I'm really seeking to fill? Most of the time, whatever emotional need that you're seeking to fill doesn't cost money no matter what society and advertising has conditioned you to believe. A voice note to a friend, a cuddle session with your dog, writing a love letter to yourself, sometimes that's all it takes. It's time to wake up and stop spending money we don't have on stuff we don't need. Now this video was a little different from my usual practical how-to strategy type videos about money, but I thought it was important to get this message out there because money really is 99% behavioral. If there's anything I've learned from getting out of six-figure debt and building up a six-figure net worth, I'm realizing it was all an inside game. The more I became happy with myself and stopped trying to throw money at problems, the more my finances reflected that. Not only that, but when we stop judging ourselves for all the mistakes that we've made, for all the things that didn't go perfectly well in our life or didn't go as well as Susan on Instagram, the more courage we have to face our situation, to take the action that it takes to improve where we are and go from where we are to where we wanna to get to. And I think the less shame there is about who you are, about what your finances look like, and the more you can release that negativity, the more action you can take and it'll be really aligned and feel good and, and it'll come naturally. That's what I found in my experience. It's funny because today I'm on YouTube telling everyone about my finances and all the debt that I used to be in and all the mistakes that I've made. I can be so transparent about this stuff because I've done the inside work. I no longer think of it as something that reflects on my self-worth. 
it's just stuff that happened, stuff that I did, and here's what I'm doing about it now. That's really it, it's just data and information. Any other stories you have about your finances are really just you projecting your negativity onto just numbers. So the more you love and accept yourself and are just happy with the way you are and where you're at in life right now, I promise you the more your finances will improve as well because your spending will come from a, a much more aligned place of I'm good enough and anything I spend is because I truly want to, not because I'm trying to improve myself or fix something. That's it for this video. I really hope you got some value out of it. It's a little different from the videos I normally post, so I would love to hear what you thought in the comments. Like this video if it sparks some interesting insights for you. Share them in the comments because I want to hear. And I think that's it. I really hope you guys have an amazing week. I post new videos every Wednesday about making money, saving money, and investing money. All things money. So be sure to subscribe if you're new around here. Hit the notification bell and I will see you very soon. Bye.